All right. Peace, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. This is the first lecture in the Flat Earth Lecture Series. All right. And again, this is going to be a series of videos because there's so much stuff to cover. All right. Um, I'm just going to uh, switch back to my trestle board over here. And a trestle board is just something that you use, you know, the ancestors used to use, the masons use, um, in terms of putting information on that you're going to teach about that day. Sometimes you see a trestle board like the Dogon, you know, you'll just see different symbols on a wall or ancient commit. You see different hieroglyphics, you know, that the teacher is going to use to teach from. And masonry, they have actual trestle board with different symbols on it and so on and so forth. So I call this my trestle board where, you know, I just line up the different things I'm going to be dealing with. And so this subject, the flat earth, wow, this is something deep. You know, when I first started hearing about this thing, maybe about a year ago, I was like, flat earth? What are you talking about? You know, I was like, man, you know, the Moors showed them that the earth was around and now they're trying to jump back to the flat earth. I said, this is crazy, you know, and my, you know, because we all was brought up like that. You know, we was all brought up, you know, in school, you know, teaching us about Christopher Columbus and all the people around him talking about the earth is flat and how silly they were and all that stuff like that. And, you know, and, you know, so it's ingrained in you at an early age that flat earth is just crazy, you know. And there's other terminology that I could use, but I use flat earth because that's the terminology most used by people now. And so I want people to make the connection. All right. And so we, we're going to kind of revisit. In other words, when I first heard it, I kind of brushed it off myself, you know, and poo pooed it and, you know, whatever, you know. And but when I began to look into it, I was like, wait a minute, what? And so I began to revisit, go back to that very first question that you asked when you first go to school, kindergarten, preschool, whatever, first grade, and you see that globe sitting on top of the teacher's desk or, you know, in a classroom somewhere, or maybe even in your house, maybe your parents had one, and, and you, ask your, you ask your parents, you say, that's the earth? That's what we on right now? And they say, yeah, the first thing you ask is, how come the people on the bottom down here is not falling off? I mean, this is just common sense. It's so common sense that every child first asks that question. And then the teacher tell you, oh, because of gravity. Gravity is holding them on to the earth. And you're like, what? And then once you accept that lie, that sets you up for all the lies to follow. In other words, once you accept that lie of the Earth being a globe and gravity keeping everybody stuck to this globe, once you accept that first lie from the authorities, quote unquote authorities or establishment, that sets you up to accept all the other lies you're going to learn from school, church, this, that, you know, even your parents who don't know no better. It sets you up for it. And so that's why. This flat earth thing is so significant. And the ramifications is enormous is because once you realize that they lie to you about the very earth that you walk on every day, at that point, you question everything. Because that's so monumental. That's something so crazy to pull off that you, in your mind, you say, wait a minute. If they was able to lie about that and convince me about that, what else did they lie to me about? And at that point, all things open to question. And so I'm going to get into that, the significance of that and the ramifications of that. But first, and so what I'm going to do, I have a lot of information, tons of information to tie in and connect with all this. All right. But there's no way possible that I'm going to be able to cover, cover it in the hour or the two hours that we have tonight. So what I'm going to do tonight and this first part of this lecture series is I'm going to give you all the broad overview and kind of touch on a number of different points. And then in the later and in, in the upcoming lectures, I'm going to go into further and deeper detail as well as add on other connections. All right. So this is going to be serious. We're going to do this every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. 
All right, and we're going to go in. And so let's go ahead and get started. And again, um, feel free, you know, to ask questions at any point. You know, I'm going to leave time at the end for questions, ample time, you know, but at the same time, you know, if you really have, have a burning question, you know, that you feel you got to get in before I move it on any further, then go ahead and get it in. You know, I love questions. All right. So the main thing is that I'm just going to I have my notes here, so I'll keep track of where I'm at. All right. So don't worry about that. All right. So let's get started. The first place where I want to start off at is with NASA. And NASA's lies, because those are the those are the ones who are cited as authorities in terms of this whole globe, Earth, you know, space you know, the sun being 93 million miles and all these different things kind of all rest with NASA in a, a sense. All right. And they're seen as the main authority with regards to these things. And so first, let me point, let, first, let me show you the degree to which NASA is a liar and a deceiver. And so once you see that now, then you're going to be, be begin to question everything they say. You know, it's like a person who you meet. It's like you meet a person and you taught that this person is an expert in this. And then you've shown how this person has lied, lied, lied constantly. Then naturally, you're not going to you're not going to believe what that per anything that person says. Or if you do, or if that person do say something, you, you're going to take it with a grain of salt and you're going to research it before you believe it. So I'm going to start there with NASA. And um. Just to go over a couple of things that many people may not realize is that NASA began after World War II. They brought all those Nazis from Germany. They brought all those scientists here to America. Under what was known as Operation Paperclip. You could Google that. You can look it up. There's a lot of information about that. They brought them here under Operation Paperclip. And, and, and in conjunction with those Nazi scientists, that was the beginning of NASA and the CIA and a whole, and a, and a whole area of the government um, de dealing with so-called black ops, what they call black ops, or ops that they would do that they couldn't ask Congress for funding. All right, so they had to keep it on a down low. This is how the whole crack trade and epidemic began, you know, with the so-called black ops because they needed funding for the Contra wars and all the stuff in El Salvador and all that stuff like that. And being that these wars and these things that they were doing was illegal, they couldn't go to Congress and say, oh, we need money, you know, to do some illegal operations. You see what I'm saying? So what they did was fund those operations through the drug trade. All right. But all this really began with Operation Paperclip and, and bringing those Nazis in. So right from the very beginning, they're bringing in Nazis from the beginning. So right at the very foundation of NASA, you see what's up. All right. So that being said, let me kind of jump into it. There's a, there's a lot here. I have a lot of video clips that I want to show you. I have video clips. I have images. I have documents, as you can see here. And I kind of like got them organized, even though it don't look like it. But um. There's an organization to it. And um, and I've marked off different parts of different clips so I could kind of jump to them, you know, as best I can. Now, there's some new clips that are added that um, I didn't get a chance to mark them off yet, but I got a pretty good idea where everything is at. So just kind of bear with me because, like I said, there's a lot, you know, with images I could just show it to you, but with video clips, you know, you got to find the right time on the video all right so let's see i i want to start you off I, I put them up here i want to start you off with this one <laughs> a big lie that's so obvious all right and, what's up everybody it's dark and if anybody has trouble hearing the video or jacob let me know if you're able to hear the video i watch it january 3rd. make sure because hey. kind of audio for yeah, the video all right, good. If it's too loud or it sounds fuzzy or anything like that, you know, y'all just let me know. All right, but I want to make sure y'all get the optimal from these videos. Now, this guy here, 
he 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 showed something very key. But he didn't explain it in the video. He didn't he didn't actually say what it was. You know, he he like left it for the audience to kind of guess it. So I ran it by a lot of people, but nobody was able to figure out what he was trying to what the point he was trying to make. So I'm gonna just break it down and go straight to the chase. Um and I'll just kind of stop it just to interject certain things at certain points. All right, so let's go. 2016. How is everybody? I hope you guys had an amazing new year. We're going to start this year out with an epic conspiracy theory. Now, let me just mention that this is dealing, when he says epic, this is dealing with the, uh, the vehicle that they sent out, so-called a million miles from Earth. All right, to take a picture of the Earth and the Moon. Now, I'm just gonna put out there right from the beginning that this is gonna sound crazy right off the face of it. NASA so-called been going to the Moon, space shuttle missions, ISS, International Space Station. And will you believe that there's not one real picture of the planet Earth from space? Not one actual real picture. All the pictures that you've been shown of the Earth, the big blue marble, all the stuff like that, all those pictures are either composites, meaning that they made up of many smaller pictures, glued and pasted together in a sense. They either CGI or computer generated or paintings. There's no actual, and that's why they refer to as images and not as photos. You'll never see NASA refer to those images that they're putting out as photos of the earth. They're all images that was either composite images, CGI or computer graphics or paintings. All right. So that on the face of it, you mean to tell me, <laughs> you know, they received millions and billions and trillions of dollars in taxes and they can't take one picture to give to the people who gave them all those billions and trillions of dollars? They can't provide them with one actual picture of the actual Earth? Come on. I mean, that's the first, that's it's like a no-brainer. That's the first thing you would do if you were going out of space and you doing all this stuff like that. The first thing you're going to do is take a picture of the Earth. There's no real pictures. And I challenge anybody who's listening to this video to show me a real, actual picture. Not a composite. One picture. You know, if I'm taking a picture of you with a camera, I'm not going to take pictures of you in strips and then put them together. I'm just going to take up one picture. So that right there, that's suspect right there on the on the face of it. Now, look at this picture, this so-called recent thing that they sent out there. So-called me and Miles to take a picture of the Earth on the sunlit, so-called sunlit side. And right off the back, you could tell it's fake. <laughs> but see, NASA got a problem because when they concocted all their lies and all the stuff that this back in the fifties, nobody had laptops. There was no internet. There was no Photoshop. There was none of these things. So they didn't factor none of that into the equation. You know, now in this age, right now, the lie is over. It's a wrap. Check it out, and you're gonna see right here from this first one. Just lie right here. Well, it's not a theory at this point. Not from what I'm looking at here. I have on the web, uh, on the browser here, a website. This is from NASA. Okay. This, this is from NASA. NASA.gov. Go. stuff, guys. This just came out. Now, does this uh, look real? that I'm looking at here is from July like 16th. That's supposed to be really the moon going across the Earth. Can any of you already see what's wrong with this picture? and where I might be going with this epic. All right. So now, just looking at this picture here, this is so-called, this is supposed to be an actual picture from NASA of the Earth and the moon going across. Question number one, right off the bat, where's all the space debris and satellites? Let me see if I can show you this picture right here that, that they put out, showing all the, how Earth is surrounded by like millions of pieces of space debris, you know, space junk, satellites in the thousands. Yet, when you look at the ISS live feed, which I got on the website, flatearth.flatearthgrid.info, and when you 
look at, I don't have it here right in front of me. When you, and when you look at um, NASA's thing, you don't see no um, nothing, not even a speck of, of nothing. <laughs> no space debris, no satellites. This picture is from, supposedly from a million miles out. So you should see, I mean, literally, you shouldn't even be able to hardly even see the Earth through all the junk that they say is out there. All right, so let's continue on. The, uh, conspiracy here that we're about to try and bust right Look at open. This. this is supposed to be real. I have my doubts about the moon. Even the shadow looks fake. Look at the way the shadow it looks like like a little disc with the shadow like right on top of a table or something. I mean, this is crazy. They put, they ex they expect people to believe this in this day and time. Everybody does. A lot of people are really on the moon landings. All right, and I'm just gonna cut through the chase because there's so much I gotta show. All right, so this is from a million miles out. So imagine it, the camera is back back here, and the moon is in between the camera and the earth. And just look how big the earth is from a million miles out, and the moon is here. Now, let me just fast forward it because he didn't really explain what the point he was making, but check this out. All right. Here we go. <laughs> now, peep this out. Here they are on the moon. This is the Apollo 17 mission, right? They're on the moon. So the camera's on the moon. And look how little the Earth is. This is a, this is a famous picture called Earth Rising. So-called like Earth is rising, like the sun rising on the Earth. or they call this Earth Rise is famous. And so, see... NASA's problem, like many, like many liars, is that they forget their previous lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they tell other lies on top of that, forgetting what the previous lie they told before. So here, NASA presented this to everybody, that this is an actual picture of the Earth rising from on the moon. So if they're on the moon, right, naturally, the Earth should look bigger than when they're further out from the moon. So here's the moon here, this distance from the Earth, and this camera that's taking this picture is a million miles out. So the Earth should be even smaller. How, imagine if the camera was on the Earth, or, I mean on the moon, then the Earth should look bigger, right? So how is the camera further away and the moon is this small? <laughs> they forgot their previous lie. I can't believe. I mean, come on. They got billions and trillions of dollars, and they can't get a simple lie like this straight. This is crazy. One at some point, they was if both of these pictures are a lie. But even if they claim that these were real pictures, one of these pictures got to be false because here's the camera on the moon, and the moon is and the Earth is that small, and here's the camera further out from the moon and the earth is like tremendous, hum hum humongous. All right, so that's just lie number one, just straight up just lie, all right? <sighs> Crazy, man. Now check this picture out. N NASA, the, some things they do is just blatant right out in your face. I'm gonna read this part right here from the book of Revelations. And people, some people say, you know, why use the Bible or why mention things from the Bible? And like I mentioned in an earlier post on the um, on Facebook today, you have to understand the Bible. The Bible is a compilation of many different works from many different time periods, many of which came right from our ancestors, many of which came from the Chemites. And so it's a whole bunch of different works from different times and different places stitched together. And so some of which, like just like any compilation, some may be true, some may be slightly true, slightly false, totally false. It's for you to discern. And just like the sun is for you to draw the best part for yourself. All right. So don't get it twisted. In the Bible, is many different texts and writings 
from our ancestors, namely the Kemites. It's in there. You just have to discern for yourself what's right and what's not. All right. But here and see, you got to also understand the fact, too, that many of these that this serpent, that this Satan uses and Satan just means an adversary, an opposer, one that opposes. All right. And I'm just going to read to you this and you tell me whether or not it applies or not. It said here, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out, so that's so on and so forth. All right. Boom. Let me jump down to here. Then war broke out in heaven because y'all see one of my posts I put on 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 uh, Facebook. It said war in heaven. We are in the midst of that right now. And in the next lecture, I'm going to show you. I'm gonna actually sh I have video footage of the war in heaven and I'm going to show you how he was cast out. But let me just continue on and hopefully my voice don't get choppy because um, let me stop this. Sometimes when you try to connect to the Internet while you're streaming, it interferes. All right. It says, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. And I'm a, towards the end, I'm going to talk about angels and what exactly they are. And it says, but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. And it said, now have come salvation. And it said, then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. All right. So now let me jump back. Nusa always said that great dragon, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. Check out NASA's logo. Give me a second to locate it. I got so much stuff up here. Where did I put that logo? Boom, boom, boom. I put it. Give me a second. Shoot. Where did I put it? I know I put it up here somewhere. Oh, oh boom, boom, boom. Da, 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 da. I want you to see this. Because they straight up, it's like they straight up telling you who they are. My man, where did I put it? Just give me a second, because I downloaded so much material. I put it. Man. All right, I'm going to have to get it off the internet real quick. Uh, hold on. Let me just search real quick. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Oh, here. Go. All right, this. All right, this is the video from which I got the image from. So let me just see if I could jump to it. I think this is it. Look at this. Now, this usually says NASA. He just put lies there. But this is the serpent's tongue. The forked tongue of the serpent. This is NASA's logo. The real um, image that I have is, you know, is the actual one that says NASA and everything. But here's their logo. And in the image I have, it shows the snake's face right here. And it shows the tongue coming out, the forked tongue. And so that's definitely applicable because they're def definitely showing you that they the serpent that has deceived the whole world. This flat earth thing involves everybody on the planet. And all the different space agencies, all of them was, are involved with this deception. All right, so let me just continue on. All right, so we got that. All right, let me show you some more of the NASA lies here. Now, NASA, humans for the most part don't have a clue they don't want one or need one either they're happy they think they have a oh, well, let me just mention you know this is another thing see there's a number of things that they do they use the bible and revelations like a playbook for one and they dramatize and they make different things of those things happen the other thing that they do is they put the truth right out in front of you because like they say, sometimes where's the best place to hide a thing? Right in front of your face. So you see the symbolism on the dollar bill. You see these different things it's right in front of us. And they also put it out in movies. 
All right. A lot of different movies. It's almost as if like they're under some type of oath where they have to tell, they have to reveal or tell the people what they're doing. But it, it's not said how they have to reveal that fact. And so a lot of times they'll try and reveal it through something that's fictional. So you just saying in your mind, oh, that's just fiction. That's just a movie. That's just whatever. All right. But all these different movies containing these truths can, cannot be a coincidence. Look at this part. I'm sure you all remember this from Men in Black. And check out what he says. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Well, why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you know tomorrow. We don't. <laughs> That's deep. Now, check this out, too. Why did Obama mention jokingly, or even jokingly, why did he mention the Flat Earth Society on four different occasions? Is he trying to, like, hint, like, you know, open our mind, open our ears up to something? On four different occasions, he mentions the Flat Earth Society out of the blue. I have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. All right, let me just jump now. All right, now I'm going to do a little jumping around. I got uh, the two minute and 13 second mark marked off here. And let's see what I, why I marked that off here. This is from another movie. I'm just showing y'all this real quick because just to show you how they put a lot of this stuff out in the movie. It's Antarctica in this. It's cold out here. Yeah, it is. It's like the South Pole. It's like the deep South Pole, if there was one. There isn't, though. And let me jump, because I, I, I'm going to touch on that, what all that's about in a minute. So right now, I might not make 100% sense to those who don't know. But let me jump now to 9.58. Let me just see something, because I want to mainly just touch on the NASA deception right now at this point. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, look at this. And I want you just to keep this in mind, because remember now... The Earth, where did I put that other video? The Earth is so-called a ball spinning at a thousand miles per hour, right? We rotating, revolving on this, you know, rotating on this, spinning on itself on its, on its own axis, a thousand miles, thousand thirty-seven and a third miles per hour, going around the Sun at like sixty-four thousand miles. And I'll get the exact numbers in a minute. It's like sixty-four thousand miles per hour. And the sun itself was traveling through space at like 800 something thousand miles per hour. And it looks like it's forming like it's so called, according to their model, is traveling like a spiral through space. And here's how it's supposed to be spiral through space with all with the planets and all that stuff. The, uh, the zero G illusion, also, oh. that you see astronauts, uh, they look like they're floating or flying in space. Oh. It's achieved through three. All right. It's part of me. That's a different clip. This one right here, as I mentioned in the flyer, the whole thing about the space shuttle, International Space Station, all that is a lie. All that is fake. And this is how they fake. When they show you those images, those video clips of them, you know, walking outside the ISS or space shuttle or floating around inside the ISS and all that stuff like that, all that is fake. That whole flotation, all that's done here on Earth or in, the, on, in these planes, there's three different ways that they imitate this zero gravity, you know, type of thing. So just check this out because all, all, all is, everything's on click in the middle. different ways. <laughs> One way is through zero G planes. Uh, they're just Boeing 737 specially outfitted to do these parabolic maneuvers where they, they do a, a parabolic and then you have a zero G like free fall state where it seems like you're and look at their hair, you know, because this is now this is real, you know, almost zero grav, so-called zero gravity type of thing where, where they do it with planes and the plane climbs to a certain height then all of a sudden dives and it creates this, you know, weightlessness type of effect. Well, look at their hair. 
and the women here, if you could make it out, and just keep that in the back of your mind. Floating for about a minute at a time, you can keep yeah, this, yeah. this going. Um, the second one, then you have a zero-G blank free-fall state where it seems like you're floating for about a minute at a time. You can keep this this going. Uh, the second way, when they're like at the fake International Space Station uh, fixing things outside of it, this is done in a pool, in a dark pool, they're actually underwater. Um, and you can see bubbles rising out of the pool, uh, proving that they're in a pool in many of their spacewalks. Uh, so, so the space, where the bubbles coming from? Outside space shots are done in the pool. The inside, uh, uh, most of the inside shots are done in zero G planes, and then some of the longer inside shots are done with a green screen. And harnesses. Now check this out. They're in harnesses. That's why you see you always got these shirts pulled off, and when they stand straight up, they got their arms across their waist to hide the bulge of the harness. Now watch when this guy bends over. You can see the harness, the rope that's tied onto the harness, the cable, pulling up through a shirt. It's crazy. Watch this. The harnesses, so they just kind of float on a harness in front of a green screen. And with these three methods, they're able to produce the um, zero-G effect that everybody thinks is uh, them floating around in space. Uh, but in reality, uh, anything that goes... Hold up. Come on. Are they serious? See, when you know what to look for, most people just accept... All this stuff that they're being told, you see on the news, they was in space, blah, 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 they just accept it. You know, when, when, you, when you were programmed, your eyes could see something contrary to the programming, but your brain will filter it out. That's the power of programming. Goes up, comes right back down. There is no point where you can just go up, 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 and then... You see these guys here? You see how he's holding his arms? They tend to hold their arms up in any because the, the harness is like, imagine like a belt going around with cables tied on the back, holding them up. And so they, they were taught and trained to hold their arms a certain way to block the rim or the bows or the harness. Oh, I'm floating now. And I get to float through infinite space now forever. That's the illusion. That doesn't happen. You will it's crazy. And I got so much more footage of this. There's no, uh, let me see if he shows the footage. You'll always come back to the earth. You'll always fall right back down. No matter how high you go up, as high as high. Jesus, you know, that's what we in. We in a Truman show within a Truman show. See, the original Truman show is the simulation that we are in, that we created. It's actually a simulation. Really, let me just show y'all a clip real quick. And some of y'all seen how I posted it on Facebook. We in something very similar to what's known as a terrarium. Uh, let me go to the preview. This is what they call a terrarium. Excuse me. Let me just make it a little bigger. And so here you see within the dome of the terrarium, you see here is flat. This, this is the part that's flat and it's round. You know, I heard people, even Obama say, you know, comparing whether or not the earth is flat or round. The people who know that it's a flat earth doesn't say it's not round. It's both flat and round. What we're saying is that the earth is not a sphere. The dome that is in a spherical, but the earth itself is flat, very similar to a terrarium. And on a deeper level, which I'll get into deeper later, this whole thing, the whole earth and this whole terrarium, right, is a simulation. It's a computer simulation that we created. And then we build for ourselves avatars so that we can manifest within this terrarium and undergo the training of this training simulation. This is really a training simulation that we're in right now. The same way a, 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 if you was going to pilot school to learn how to be an airplane pilot, they won't just throw you right into an airplane and say, go ahead and fly it, you know, where you may go ahead and kill yourself and destroy millions of dollars worth of property. What they're going to do is put you on a flight simulator assimilation and train you that way so that you don't destroy everything that's and so in this training simulation that we call reality the reason why we created this simulation was that on the plane of soul or the plane from which we were originally on 
we we the purpose of this training simulation is to learn the knowledge of good and evil of duality that's why everything in the simulation is based on duality yin and yang male and female positive and negative good and bad it's it's a training simulation designed to teach us by experience the knowledge of good and evil that's why i said in the bible it says take ye not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for on that day you shall surely die meaning that we went from a, um, a higher state to a lower state into carnal, carnal or physical bodies that die, that eventually wear out. That's why I said in the Quran of Mecca, it said, get ye down to a lower state on earth or within this simulation shall be your habitation for a period of time. And when it said, take up, don't, when it said, take up the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that means that that was a voluntary act. That means all of us who are incarnated here within the simulation, we volunteered to go undergo this training. That's why I said you had to reach and take the fruit from the tree. The fruit didn't just pop off the tree and pop into your mouth and start chewing itself. That was symbolic to show you that it was a voluntary act. All those who wanted to go through this God training and within the simulation, volunteered, signed up, registered, matriculated into this university. And, you know, there was no gun pointed at our head forcing us to do it. We chose to incarnate and undergo this training. All right. This is really a simulation. We're going to get deep into this later because in the Akalia, I teach that if this is a if this is a computer simulation, that means what? It's programmable. That means it has an operating system. And that operation system could be programmed. In the programming language, which was shown, to, which was taught to me during the vision quest by the operating system itself, is called Akalia. And I have taught courses on that showing how to actually program it. But we'll get deep into that in another thing. But I just want to throw that in. So this is the earth here. The question is, people may ask, what keeps you know, the oceans and all that stuff from spilling off the quote unquote edge. All right. And I'm kind of jumping into the next thing here, but let me go ahead because, you know, times of rest, I got so much stuff to cover. Here's when we say flat earth, this is what we're talking about. And hold on, I didn't mean to open it that way. Let me open it in preview mode. Hold on a second. This is the flat earth map or model. All right. And so the way this works is that this right here in the very center, this is the North Pole. The South Pole on a globe model of the Earth would be like the bottom of the ball. But on the flat Earth, on, which is the true model, this is the North Pole and all of this is the South Pole. This is Antarctica. If you look up on the Internet disk magnet, the Earth is a magnet. We know it has a magnetic field. But it's not a spherical magnet. How many, how many, how many magnets have you ever seen that looks like a ball, like a sphere? Because think about it. If it's a ball or a sphere, how, how do you know what part of the ball is north and what part is south or east or west? Now, if you look up disk magnet, you'll see that in a disk magnet, that this is the north pole of a disk magnet, and the south pole is out on is the outer rim. All right, this is Antarctica. Antarctica is not an island on the bottom of a ball. Antarctica is really an ice wall going around the Earth, keeping everything in. This ice wall, let me show you a picture of the ice wall. This ice wall is over 200 feet high. And it keeps everything, it surrounds the whole planet and it keeps everything in. This is part of the reason why no, they don't allow nobody to go to Antarctica because if you go there, you'll find out it's not a ball. It's not an island at the bottom of a ball. It surrounds. Let me go back to the picture here. It surrounds. The whole Earth. All right. So this is deep. Now, check this out. So here's the North Pole. Here's the South Pole or Antarctica. Going around the whole thing like an ice wall keeping everything in. Now, 
if this is such a foolish model, then tell me, why is that same model used by the United Nations? This is the United Nations flag. Notice that there's no Antarctica. This is, an, this, this is symbolic of Antarctica, this outer rim. It's the same thing, like I just showed you, but there's no Antarctica. Now, why would the United Nations, who supposedly represents all the nations on the planet Earth, why would they use the flat Earth map or the flat Earth model? And it gets even deeper because when you trade this, this projection here or map here or projection is what's known as the, uh, and let me just close out these other ones so I won't get mixed up with which one I'm looking at currently here. Close that. That that projection is called the um, equidistant as a muthal projection. You can find it anywhere. All right. So now you hit, you see here United Nations is using that. Here you see the flat Earth map, and here you see United Nations. Uh, that's the ice wall. Let me get rid of that. Uh, get rid of that. And here you see what's being used by the United Nations. Guess where the United Nations got that from? <laughs> a more by the name of Al Biruni hun from hundreds of years ago. Al Biruni, here you see him with the fez on. Al Biruni. When you go to Wikipedia and you look up Al Biruni, I got so much stuff up here, it's like crazy. Um, hold on one second, Al Biruni. Al Biruni, where are you? Al-Baruni. Anyway, here, when you go here to the azimuthal equidistant projection, here you see the flat earth, and here you see they're showing you right here, the United Nations using the same thing. And then you go to the history, it says, while it may have been used by ancient Egyptians for star maps in some holy books, the earliest text describing the azimuthal equidistant projection is an 11th century work by Al Biruni. I tell y'all, truth is stranger than fiction. You know, for one thing, every time I research something, it always leads back somehow to the Moors. It's just some crazy way, always. It's just crazy. You know, I didn't put, I didn't draw this picture. I didn't put this stuff up here. I didn't put a fez on his head. All right. And so that's the flat earth model. Now, some of you may say, all right. That makes no sense. You know, how does the sun rise and how does the sun set and all that stuff like that? And this this is also a good example to show you how, depending on how you program, determines on what you see. Because we were taught that this was a ball and that the sun rises and that the sun sets, when we look at the West, but when we look east to see the sun rise and when we look west to see the sun set, that's what we visualize in our, in our mind. We visualize the sun going down, you know, behind the ball. Or in other words, that we are spinning away from it and the sun is going down that back part and that we are spinning. All right. When really what's happening is that if you was, if let's say you was here, I guess this is Australia in a two o'clock position. And if the sun was over here in the seven or eight o'clock position, you would be in night and they would be in day here. The sun travels like this, clockwise. The moon travels like this around the disc. Now you might say, all right, but the sun is 93 million miles away. It should be able to light up the whole thing. Nope. It's, let me show you this. See, again, when they was putting out this lie starting 500 years ago with the Jesuits, NASA didn't invent this globe lie. They just took off where the Jesuits and them left off. All right. And so when they when they um was doing this, going way back to the Jesuits and stuff like that, they wasn't thinking about no internet and people having the technology in their hand. There's a camera. I'm looking to get this camera myself. It's called a Nikon. P900. It's said to be the most powerful camera on Earth. It's only 400 something, $500. It's said to be the most powerful camera on Earth because it got zoom 
you could zoom into stuff like a telescope. It has a uh, 200 times zoom. And when you look at um, time-lapse photography, now, where's that at? When you look at time-lapse photography of the sun, I'll come across it, you'll see that the sun is not setting behind a ball. It's just getting farther and farther away from you. Here's a beautiful picture, a beautiful gif of how it works on the flat earth. And just so you know, the sun is not no 93 million miles away. That is a lie. Check this, check, check this video. And then I'm going to show you how it works on that other picture there. The sun is not, it says, because at that time too, during the Jesuits and during the NASA, they didn't expect private individuals to send balloons up with digital cameras attached to them. You got kids sending up balloons. There's a kid right here in Arizona who sent up a balloon 35,000 feet with a camera on it. I have another video clip here where he sent the balloon up 100,000 feet. And guess what the sun looked like? That's just the music. Hmm? Hold on. Let me just jump back here. I know I didn't just download music. Here you go. All right, so here you have all these people sending up these balloons. Arizona, Texas, the Caucasus Mountains. And it was another place. Oh, I forgot where the other. Oh, te yeah, Texas. And it was another place. They sent up these balloons. The balloons. Here we go. Let's take a look at the as the model is. So here we're going to show the uh, sum of day or night. Plus seven. See it with your bit. eyes in this scale. Go. The Earth now, is going down so to know, ninety-three. Look at this graph for a minute. This graph is proportional, so that if this was the Earth here. And these little boxes represent, you know, miles and stuff like that. This will be the sun here, 93 million miles away. Now, if the sun is 93 million miles away, I don't care if the sun ray from this top corner comes. It's always going to come and hit the earth at a 90 degree angle. And it's going to hit the whole earth at, from this distance. Well, look, check out what the balloon seen. It's the sun. And, and until date or where it was launched that's yeah, already in this look how close it no it would never itself. change <laughs> well if it did man we've been deceived imagine Dang, they lied about the earth we on the sun everything it wouldn't be enough for your eyes to pick it up so now let's look at some of the balloon launches uh, that I've put together and uh, let's take a look at those and I think we're gonna find out something very interesting here alrighty in this first Balloon launch here. This is uh, in Norway, and you and in some of these, you know, they use fish eye lens, so you see a slight curve or whatever the case may be. But the ones that didn't, you'll see that this is just straight and flat. There's no curvature. And look at the moon. I mean, excuse me. Look at the sun. It's right there. This is not 93 million miles away. And then look, it's leaving a hot spot on top of the clouds. Do you know how close that must be to leave a hot spot? If the sun is 93 million miles away, there's no way it's going to leave a small spotlight hot spot on the clouds. You could do this right in your house. Lay a piece of paper on top of a table and get a flashlight. Hold the flashlight way up, stretch your arm as high as it could go, and shine the flashlight down the paper. It's going to light up the whole paper. Bring the flashlight down closer, closer, closer to the paper. And it's going to leave a spotlight, a hot spot like this, which means there's no way in the world that the sun is 93 million miles away and it's leaving a hot spot. The sun, as you can see here, is just a little ball, no bigger than the moon, and no more than three, five thousand miles high. It's not that high. You can see the date is July 24th. I got to tell you guys, there's a lot of balloon launches out there, and there is no data as far as even the date or where it was launched. That's a shame. Uh, but I think uh, everybody should be more in tune to what they need to look for now because this is what's a lot more valuable than I thought. And that is my own balloon launch. This is the one. He sent this up, and he didn't use no fish eye lens. And he sent this up 35,000 feet, and look, totally straight, totally flat. No curvature. 
And I'm going to, now keep this in mind, this is 30,000, 35,000 feet, right? Now, please let me find another one. It's like so, it's just so much, man. It's hard to keep track of this stuff. And this is, this is not even the half, the half of it. This is just a little bit of the stuff. Um, all right, now let me, let me just see if I can just locate that one. NASA. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, not a spinning ball. Uh, oh, I think it's this one. Oh no. Pool. Ultimate pool. All right, let me see if it's this one. I know it's kind of yeah, long, the one I'm looking for. Really? Uh, Hold on, let me just see which one is this. This one is not that long. Do. I'm just, you know what? It's best if I just work. Yeah, see what. All right, what here's here's Photoshop. Afraid. Here's Photoshop. All right, this is an image now here. Um, and I'm just gonna show it just real quick. Then I'm just gonna jump off of this. But here's the image from NASA dealing with the man on the moon, right? Now with Photoshop, you could take these images right off of NASA's website and process them through Photoshop just by heightening. Uh, the contrast and stuff like that, and guess what shows up? Look at this. I mean, this is almost like juvenile scribble scrabble where they blocking out stuff. When you when you take them images and you adjust the contrast and so on and so forth, uh, uh, see brightness and contrast, you could see any alter alterations and modifications done to a photo. And here, look at this. Literally, you know, because think about it. At the time they was doing it, nobody had Photoshop. So nobody was able to discover the stuff. So he just was just like scribble, scrabbling stuff out. You know, this might have been a camera over here, a light or something over here. And they scribble, scrabbled it out, thinking that nobody's going to see that. Along comes Photoshop. All right. So anyway, <laughs> a, and that, this is just one example. There's like billions of examples of this. But let me just go here. Let me see this one. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. There's so much, so much, so much. Ultimate boom, 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 boom. Rise, quick video, flat earth. Not that one. Not that one. It must be this one. 37 minutes. Just Let's just go was down from hell. Gaining steam across the alternative. All right, news. yeah, this is it. This is it. All right. <laughs> Check this out. This is so crazy, man. It's like, wow. Once you once you start researching this, it's like you could just walk blindfolded and find stuff wrong with it. poke holes in NASA's lives. Let me show you this picture. This is supposed to be the Earth at twenty thousand miles. Uh, see, they was lying back then. They never thought we was gonna have the stuff to find us together. Talking about how images are stitched together. Boom, boom, boom. Apollo 18. Da, da, da. Where's that picture now? This is a picture. Oh, I, I marked it down, I think. Yeah. All right. Here you go. 1309. 1309. 1309. All right. <laughs> this is supposed to be a real picture. Ah, shoot, I just messed it up. Hold on. Go back. All right. What was it? Thirteen oh nine. Thirteen oh nine. And this has come from NASA. I ain't make none of this stuff up. This is NASA. This is supposed to be a picture of the Earth from twenty eight thousand miles. This is NASA saying it's not me. Twenty eight thousand miles, right? Keep that in your mind. Twenty eight thousand miles. And then I just showed y'all. Oh, let me see if I keep the picture. Hold on. Twenty thousand miles. And then I just showed y'all the picture. What is it? Showdown. That was twenty thousand miles. Just keep that in your mind. Just keep that in your mind. Twenty thousand miles. Right. They're Here's supposed the to always come in right at ninety. This is thirty-five. Uh, Whoa, what is it? Oh, 30, oh, excuse me. That was 3,500 feet, I think. All right, no, that was my mistake. All right. But again, 
you see how hazy and cloudy and hazy everything looks at just 35,000 feet? Because naturally, the further away you get from something, the more cloudy and hazy it looks, like mountains in the distance that look like a grayish color, like washed out. Here's NASA sending pictures from 20,000 feet, a million miles away, and the images are crystal clear and sharp. Any photographer will, let you, will tell you that when you further away you get, you know, it gets more hazier. And then not to mention all the space debris and all the space junk that's supposed to be there, and they got this crystal clear, sharp image of the Earth looking like that. That's definitely C CGI. All right. All right. So now let me let me see how much time we got because I want to leave time for questions. I'm gonna jump into some more things here now. Oh, let me before I forget. 704. I mean, oh, 1004. All right. Oh boy, so much. Now, um, now I'm gonna just do some common sense with y'all. Common sense stuff with y'all. All right. Think about this. The Earth. All right, let's let's go back to that very first question that you asked when when you seen um the image of the globe and all that stuff like that. And I'm just gonna throw a picture up here right now while I'm talking because this is what we're doing. You know, we're peeking outside of the dome. Oh, and let, while I'm talking mention the dome, let me touch on that. The dome. Let me get to Admiral Perry. I mean Admiral Byrd, Antarctic. The Antarctic Treaty. Check out what happened. And this is right just prior to NASA being formed. Right? And this is going to just put everything in perspective for y'all. Van Allen belts. And I'm going to mention something here that even a lot of flat earthers don't realize. Um, and I'm looking for one more thing. I'm looking for the Admiral Bird. I don't see it there, so maybe I'm gonna. Oh, I know I, I downloaded Admiral Bird. Um, just give me a second. Um, da, da, da. Revelations, April distant. All right. All right. If you uh, Google Admiral Bird, anyway, let me just give you the history real quick in the name of time. Admiral Bird, he goes to Antarctica, right? I downloaded it. Let me just see something real quick. Downloads. Maybe I can put it in a different folder. And I'll embellish. That's all right. Anyway, let me just, I'm going to call it up. If, if my voice gets a little choppy, it's because I'm looking this up on the internet. So I'll just let it settle down real quick. Richard E. Bird. Look up Richard E. Bird. And let me just scroll down to here. Richard E. Byrd, he was a well-known admiral, well-respected, all that good stuff, right? And he went on expeditions to the North Pole first, and then he went to Antarctica. And guess what? Remember I mentioned, oh, let me show you this picture here. Remember I mentioned that we in a dome, and let me just go back to these images again here. So remember I mentioned that we in a, the earth is like almost like a terrarium, you know, flat, and then you have a dome. And remember, I told you Antarctica is the outer rim, right? Guess what? When Admiral Byrd he went he went to South uh, South uh, South Pole, I mean, so-called South Pole, Antarctica, and he went there a couple of times, and the and the second time, first or second time, he must have found something. Because when he came back, the next time they sent him down there, they sent him with a fleet of ships, army, tanks, everything down there to establish a, 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 a straight up base. And it was reports that when he got down there, planes were crashing into some type of invisible force field. They thought that when the Nazis went down there, they thought the Nazis had set up some type of invisible force field down there, that these planes were just, you know, flying routine missions or whatever, and boom, crash into something. And they thinking that the, the, that the Nazis set up uh, uh, um, these force fields. What happened was that when Admiral Perry went to the South Pole, he discovered they found the edge 
of the dome. All right. And this was like 19, he passed 1957. This was like 19, let me, let me get the exact date for y'all. Now check out what happened. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is the show and prove to you that they never went to no moon or none of that stuff. They never went past the Van Allen belts because guess what the dome is? And you don't, you don't hear a lot of them speaking about this. They sent them military personnel, all the stuff. It was called Operation High Jump. All right. 1946. Right. He goes down there. And again, the planes, all the stuff. And remember, this is right before so-called the Roswell crash at 47. All that was concocted based on what happened when he went down there. Right. They discover the edge of the dome. They discover the part of the dome that comes down and touches and touches the edge of Antarctica. All right. Then when he gets, then when they get back, when he gets returned from Antarctica, right, a couple of things happen. All of a sudden, America starts sending missiles straight up in the air. Now, if you look at most of the missiles that America been sending and all that stuff like that, they always fly in the arch. They'll fly straight up for a little while while everybody's looking, and then all of a sudden you see it level out and start going across like this. And then it'll plop down into some ocean out of sight of the people. It'll be so far away that people don't see that it's going down in some ocean somewhere. And then they pluck the astronauts and stuff out. And that's where the next part of the lie begins, where they simulate like they're out in outer space. All right. But when they got back from Antarctica, they were sending missiles straight up. Why? Because they found the outer edge of the dome here. And this is called the firmament. In the Bible, this was referred to as the firmament that divides the waters from the waters, all right? So they found this edge here, they come back, and they start sending missiles straight up, trying to find the top of it, right? And they found out that they can't get past it, that they can't even get near it, all right? So right after, right after that time, right after Admiral Burke is back, they passed the Antarctica Treaty, all right? Here's all the different nations that's a party to that treaty. Now think about this. And when you look at look at the interview, I got all the stuff on my website, the interview with Admiral Byrd and all the stuff like that. When he comes back, he says, man, he says Antarctica, he says there's land bigger than the United States down there. He says there's natural riches, resources, this, that, oil, energy, all the stuff down there, like a treasure chest. Yet they come back and sign a treaty saying nobody can go down there. This is one of the longest standing treaty that has never been violated. Over 53 countries are parties to this treaty as of 2016. Even corporations, you would, you would think corporations, Exxon Mobil, all these ones, you would think they will be tripping over themselves trying to get to Antarctica to scoop up all that wealth down there. Yet not only do they not go down there, they don't even ask if they could go down there. Now, come on. What, what conspiracy, what agreement, what treaty is so powerful to stop the greed of these multinational corporations from even asking? All right, so they formed this treaty. They formed NASA. They formed the CIA. All the stuff was formed and happening once they got back and they found the top of the dome. And they found that they can't get past it. They have never, ever been past the Van Allen belts. The Van Allen belts, and again, you don't even hear... Oh, Flat Earth is speaking about this. This dome is not glass. It's not like, you know, some invisible glass or see-through glass or something like that. The firmament or the dome is actually the Van Allen belts. It's the Van Allen belts. Here you, now here, they show you what it looks like on a spherical Earth, but we know the Earth is not a sphere. It's a flat plane. So if you cut that in half, you see that it's a what? It's a dome. And you see the part of the dome touching down here at what they call Antarctica. But again, they showing you this on a globe, so it's not totally accurate. It's more like this. This is the Van Allen radiation belts. That's the limit that they, that nobody could go past. All right? 
And so let me put this all in perspective now. This earth is a single simulation. It's focused. We've been, you know, you hear people talking about all the stuff out of space, all the stuff out there. Uh Uh-uh. It's just this right here. This is it right here. What they call, they'll tell you that the stars out of space, that all these galaxies, all the stuff that's out here, millions of light years away and all this crazy stuff. All that's a lie. All those stars are fixed here within the firmament. You have, let me explain this to y'all. What they call planets, you have two, these are all orbs. All the stuff is really orbs. What do I mean by orbs? I'm sure y'all all heard of orb UFOs. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna show y'all a couple of things before we leave tonight that's gonna blow y'all mind. All right. Orbs. And I'm sure y'all seen video footage of these so-called orb UFOs. They're just like they're like glowing orbs. When you study them and carefully analyze them, you come to find out that they're really plasma. What is plasma? Plasma, they refer to as the fourth. Um, as the fourth state of matter, really is the first and original. And it also will tell you that 99.9% of the universe is plasma. All right. The other uh, three is gas, liquid, and solid. And so in school, they, you know, they teach you in chemistry and all stuff about gas, liquid, and solid. Very rarely do you hear them speak about plasma, but yet plasma is 99.9% of the universe is plasma. But yeah, they don't even they don't really teach you about that. These orbs are plasma, and these orbs are the ultimate shapeshifters. These orbs are what in ancient times were referred to as angels. In the Bible, they refer to these orbs as angels. These orbs, they're like programs within the simulation. They carry out, maintain. And carry out and do whatever needs to be done within the simulation. All of them have different duties within the simulation. All right. They like programs. All right. Each having a different duty. Different sizes, different shapes, different vibrations, different frequencies. But they are the ultimate shape shifters. Now, in terms of what we refer to as stars, stars are just orbs fixed in the in the in the uh Van Allen belts. They'll tell you that. The Van Allen belts protect us and they block uh, uh, incoming cosmic rays from coming in and they kind of get stuck here and they can't make it to Earth to harm us. Keep that in mind because the plasma and given electromagnetic uh, uh, fields of the radiation belts, what happens is that it has the ability for those orbs to become fixed in it or on it or in it. All right, because of the electromagnetic nature of it. Later on, I'm gonna show y'all more video footage of orbs and stuff like that. All right, but let me just uh, give y'all the whole picture. All right, so in the firmament or the Van Allen belts, you have these orbs all stuck in it, and they form and they 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 what make up the constellations. And if you shine a camera on the North Pole using time lapse photography, you will see. I'm all I'm going around in a circle. The earth is not spinning. The earth is stationary. This this orb, this uh, excuse me, this dome is what's spinning with the fi- with the stars fixed or the orbs fixed in it or on it is spinning. And then not no 93 million miles or uh, million light years away. No, they're right here stuck within the Van Allen belts. That's why when you see this picture here, See, our ancestors knew, the Chemites knew. Look what you see here. Hold on. Look at this picture. Hold on. You see this? Let me make it bigger. This is their representation of this terrarium core. Here you see the glass, just like I showed you in the early or the other picture. The glass dome. Here's the dome. This is the Van Allen belts. And where do you see the stars at? They're in the firmament, they're in the Van Allen belts. All right. Here's Geb, the Earth, flat Earth. They don't show Geb as no globe. This is this is flat. You might have a mountain here or a mountain there. All right. But this is Geb, the Earth. 
Here's the firmament with the stars in it. These are all orbs. Now you have two, you have a couple of different types. You have many different types of orbs. These are what they call the fixed stars, the fixed um, orbs that are fixed within the electromagnetic field of the Van Allen belts. Then you have so-called planets. In ancient times, the ancestors referred to those as wandering stars or orbs. All right, wandering stars or orbs, they're orbs. They're not physical dirt planets like they try to teach us. They're orbs, but they have the ability, they're not, they're not fixed to the firmament. They have the ability to move about in cycles. All right, so those are the planets are wandering orbs or what they call wandering stars or wandering orbs. They have the ability to move about. Then you have another type of orbs that's called, guess what? They're called guardian angels. These are the ones that have the ability. You, you have, you have, all right. Remember the angels. You remember in Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels that came down to Earth. Remember, they, they are the orbs are the ultimate shapeshifters. They could take on any form, any shape. So they come down to Earth and they take on the form of man, of humans. All right. Then you have some, for instance that are, are fixed, but they are guardian angels. These stars, that's, a lot of these stars that you see up here, these orbs, they're like eyes. Whose eyes? Who's all these eyes looking at us? Your eyes. That's you on the outside of the simulation. Remember I teach in the Akalia course that, that we created the simulation and then we created for ourselves avatars or bodies so that we could come within this simulation and operate and go through the training within this simulation. Every night that you go to sleep, you return back to the source. And then when it's time for you to wake up, you come back into your body and then you begin to dream first. Dreaming is the process of reconnecting you back into your avatar. And then once you fully connect it, then you wake up and you operate these bodies for another 24 to 72 hours max. Remember, these bodies, these avatars, you can only operate for 72 hours and then they must go into standby mode, just like a just like a laptop. Every time you go to sleep, your avatar. Your physical body goes into standby mode like a laptop and you return back to the source. When you come back in and wake that body up, just like you wake up a laptop. You can only operate it for 72 hours max and then it has to go into standby mode to recharge and regenerate. It has to. If this was the only reality, how come you can only stay in it for 72 hours? All right, but more on that later, that's all in the Akalia courses. All right, but now, so now keep in mind now that these eyes, I always teach that this simulation is like a video game. That you, imagine you created a video game and then created an avatar for you to operate in that video game. That makes you both the player and the played, and we are literally playing ourselves. <laughs> Literally, we're playing ourselves and these eyes up here. Are you looking in on the simulation, observing yourself? Our eyes looking at ourselves manifest in the form of orbs it, on the inside here. It looks like an orb or a star. That 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 star, which is your eye looking in. That is also referred to as your guardian angel. And when you get into a distress or si distressful situation or whatever here on Earth, your, your guardian angel actually has the ability to detach itself from the firmament and come down to rescue you. And that this happened, I seen it happen with my son when he had to go through surgery. I seen his guardian angel come down right outside his hospital room. And I looked right out the window and seen it. It was an orb spinning all different colors. Now, let's look at some pictures here. What am I talking about? So now let me show you all this footage. All right. This, I think I'll close on this, this thing here dealing with the orbs. And then I'll take any questions or whatever from that point. All right. So let me show you all this. This is a famous clip I showed my students when I was teaching in New York City a long time ago. This is footage of what, what, what he referred to himself as Prophet Yahweh. Check out how he we have the ability to call, call these orbs down. Check out how he calls this orb down on, on NBC News. 
And then I'm going to show you something else that's going to blow your mind. Check this out. <laughs> this thing is so deep with it. It's time, y'all. A possible motive in the brutal killing is tied to a Las Vegas strip club. He's a Las Vegas man who claims he can summon UFOs on command. Pretty wild. So we sent Action News reporter Mike Della Street. Normal tonight. Last night we had ghost hunters, now, now UFOs. That's right. Before there is a Las Vegas guy <laughs> making an extraordinary <laughs> claim about extraterrestrials. So we sent Action News reporter Mike Della Street to and check it out. Mike. So All right, guys, just listen up here. This guy says the Old Testament written in Hebrew taught him how to summon UFOs. All right, he says he can also do this on command, and he adds he's been doing it for 25 years, keeping all of it secret until now. These beings are here. They are here. They're just sitting right up there. We met up with Prophet Yahweh, seer of Yahweh at Doolittle Park off Lake Mead. We picked the day, we picked the time, and we picked the location. Everyone's going to think you're absolutely nuts. Well, I thought I was absolutely nuts. <laughs> Until he says he saw UFOs. Over the years, 1,500 of them. Can we make it uh, 1,501 today? What do you think? I'll try it. He says the voice in his head told him to go public now. So we took him up on his offer, and we scanned the skies. Nothing but a few clouds. When the prophet started praying for a sighting, I wasn't exactly convinced. I pray, oh Yahweh, that you sent a sighting so that they know that I am not mentally ill. I am not a false prophet. Some of may know about me. Like those who seek to kill me say I am. I see something straight up. Oh, brother, look at it. There it is. You can barely see it, a white speck. Then another sighting. There it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Photojournalist Jonathan Hawkins locks in on it. Let's take a closer look here. It's oh. an orange sphere that appeared out of nowhere. I call the boss with an unexpected change in my story. <laughs> I can see it clear as day. In fact, it's bright. I can't believe this. It's, it's moving pretty fast. It's going to Nellis Air Force Base. It wants to be seen. We called Nellis <laughs> to see what these things might be. Guess what? They didn't call us back. But this thing started coming back toward us. It's yeah. coming toward us now, I think. What? See, it's coming up toward us. Whoa, man! Hallelujah. Then, a few seconds later, it disappeared. It's going back up in space. Prophet Yahweh isn't concerned. He says it'll be back. And I'm still not quite sure what those things were. Now, if I didn't see this. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Keep that in mind. Remember, I told you that they're the ultimate shapeshifters. That's what they seen at Fatima, at the site of the so-called Virgin Mary of Fatima. It was an orb, but the orbs have the ability not only to shape shift, but they can make different people looking at the same orb see different things based on whatever your religion or whatever it is. All right, so that's the orb, and you can see how they could come down. All right, now check out this. Now check this out. Now remember, I told you that they started shooting rockets up, and they discovered the edge in that article. They said, they said, you know what? We're gonna block access to both parts of the edge because they don't want you to realize that we in assimilation. If you knew that we was inside of a dome, come on. You know this is this definitely got to be some type of assimilation here, some type of Truman show. All right. So they said that we're going to pass the Antarctica Treaty and they got military down there. If you, you couldn't go to Antarctica if you wanted to. They'll let you go on the outlying islands over there by the Falkland Island and the tip of South America. But you try and go anywhere else in South America, They'll scoop you up real quick. You ain't going nowhere near there. And they said, we're going to lock down the top of the dome through NASA and space. We're going to militarize space. And anybody who tries to get out there to see what's up, we're going to take care of them, just like we would do in Antarctica. All right. So now they've been trying to get past the Van Allen belts for a long time. They can't get past it. They shot rockets up there, all kinds of stuff. Now, check this out. Check this out. Check out what they was check, check out what they tried to do. Here you go. Check this out. They're crazy. Bless mon cœur d'une longueur monotone. Je répète. Bless mon cœur. Okay. They announced that they discovered a new damn article. Right, you can look this. The reason I'm go. making this video is if you come over, of course, you can find a lot of information on it. Here's the wiki on it. I mean, you know, of course, Wikipedia. But I want to take you down to the bottom of the Wikipedia article, and you can look this up to sure. verify. This isn't added by anybody recently, and this is legit. Um, let me just go ahead and read this to you, and you're going to be shocked. 
when I read this to you. Talk of a proposed removal of the Van Allen radiation belts. <laughs> uh, remember I told you, why are they trying to remove the Van Allen belts? Because of the limitation. They, can, they have never been past it, and they can't get past it. So now, check out, they tried to come up with this technology to remove it. Check it out. Now, they just announced that they discovered a new radiation belt that formed, and that's like a fourth radiation belt, and that's further up here at the top of the article. But listen to this. High voltage orbiting long tether, high volt, is a concept proposed by Russian physicist V.V. Danilov and further refined by Robert P. Hoyt and Robert L. Forward for draining and removing the radiation fields of the Van Allen radiation belts that surround Earth. Now, first of all, that's just nut on the face of it. That's some nut stuff. If, if the Van, if, if it's supposedly protecting us from cosmic radiation and stuff like that, are they out of their mind talking about removing it? This, this just shows you how silly these people are. A proposed configuration. Now keep in mind what they said, a tether for removing the Van Allen belts. And so what they was basically saying, listen consists to what of a system about. of five 100 kilometer long conducting tethers deployed from satellites and charged to a large voltage. This would cause charged particles that encounter the tethers to have their pitch angles changed, thus, over time, dissolving the inner belts. All right, so keep this in mind. And see, they mentioned tether, right? This was a proposed removal of the tether belts and some technology that was developed and patented and all the stuff like this. Guess what? They actually tried to do this using the space shuttle. Check out this footage I'm about to show you right now. And this footage comes from a Canadian guy named Martin Stubbs. And what happened was that he tapped into the NASA's live video feed without them knowing it. And he, he videotaped this um, space shuttle flight where they went up and they stretched out a 12 mile long tether from the shuttle, attempting to drag it and destroy the radiation belts. But guess what happened? Remember I told you these orbs, they were what was referred to as angels and the, they all have different roles. Some of those angels functions like the immune system of this whole simulation. And so when they went up there and tried to deploy this tether, guess what? The divine immune system kicked in with these orbs and take a look at what happened. On February 25th, 1996, on space shuttle mission number STS-75, NASA launched a possible breakthrough energy technology experiment. They launched a 12 mile long electrical conductor cable called an electrodynamic tether. Just... There we go. Wasn't that what they were just speaking about in another article? Here you see them actually doing it. This is the space shuttle. Check out what happened to their behinds. And keep in mind what I read earlier. Remember what it said. I'm just going to read this again as you, right before you look at this. All right. It said, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels, remember that serpent, and you've seen the serpent tongue in NASA's thing. And it said the dragon and his angels fought back. So you see them up there trying to deploy this tether. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent, and I showed you the serpent tongue on the NASA logo, called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. I showed you all the lies and all the deception of NASA, Odo Shabola. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. All right, keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back to the video. And here they see they're trying to fight back, right? They trying to destroy and bust through the dome by destroying the dome to get out the Designed to collect belts. high energy electrons in the Earth's ionosphere and magnetic fields. But they say high voltage in the previous day. The motion of the conductor tether across the Earth's magnetic fields induces a voltage along the 12 mile length of the tether. <laughs> Crazy. By utilizing estimates and the charge densities of the Earth's magnetic fields and the ionosphere, the voltage produced is expected to be up to several hundred volts per kilometer. 
If successful, if the experiment could produce a lot of electric deploy, power. Watch what if happens. Additional power is it's going to snap. The tether in the opposite direction. And watch what that happens when it normally snaps. wants to flow. Here's the tether. The tether, in theory, Long could line. push, creating propulsion against the Earth's gravity to raise the shuttle's orbit. Here you go. The, the advantage snap. to this revolutionary and technology watch when it snaps, what happens. is that it does not require any rocket fuel. If successful, electrodynamic tethers could prove a way to greatly reduce the cost of in-space propulsion. For That's example, what saying. the, the International Space Station Alabama. could keep itself in orbit, saving nearly two billion dollars in orbital reboost rocket That's fuel not the real every reason. ten years of the station's operations. I checked this out. But on February 25th, <laughs> after the 12-mile tether began producing electricity, an unexpected overload of electrical. All right. The electricity is producing the overload. It did what? It triggered the simulation's immune system. In the movie Matrix, it was called Seraph. What did Seraph say? I protect that which matters most. Watch. Energy fluctuating between two and ten times that predicted, due to inaccurate estimates in the electrical charge of the Earth's magnetic fields, it's ionosphere, gonna snap. and possibly watch, space Watch radiation. what happens. Fried the tether conductor cable and it broke, severing it from the space shuttle. So the tether has broken. At it the, broke. Uh, now watch. As soon as it snapped, the, the tether has broken. It is going away from us. Get it on the TV. Get it on the TV. They're going to come on the TV. Watch. The tether has broken. Copy. This is NASA footage. And Martin Stubbs tapped into it. They didn't know he was tapping into their live feed. Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Again, that call reporting that uh, the crew can see the tether and uh, see the satellite. Yes, the tether. It's beautiful. They straightened it out, and you see it glowing. They encapsulated. Look at look at all the orbs coming. They coming by the hundreds. This is the immune system. This is Seraph. All these are orbs. Look at them. This view uh, showing. Uh... They don't know what they're seeing right now. They don't know what they're seeing. <laughs> it look like cells, exactly. Immune cells, white blood cells. Look at it. The satellite. This is tw now. Keep in mind, this is 12 miles long. So use this like a ruler. And the guy, he's gonna say, "What's all that?" He's gonna say, "Oh, it's dust that's trailing, that's following us, being lit up by the sun. Dust particles." But now, if it's a dust particle, if this is 12 miles long, and you see one of these spheres go behind the tether, there's one that goes behind. That's almost like a third of the size of this. That means it's three miles long. And if it was if it was dust, if it was dust and it went behind the tether, it would be so far out you would, couldn't see it. But yet you see it go behind the tether, and it was three miles long. I don't know no dust particles that's three miles long. Watch. Again, uh, just moving into sunrise. Watch what he says. Eighty-one look orbs. nautical miles look how they now look. from Columbia. Going behind, it went behind the tether, and it's that big. That's not dust. Look at them. Look at them. They all. They all. They like. What's up? What's up? What's up? What you want to do? <laughs> what you want to do, serpent? You about to get cast out? Look at this. Watch it go behind the tether. And this is 12 miles. That had to be at least a mile. In, in diameter. Now, now watch this explanation. They're trying to zoom out and get different angles where they don't see that, but they can't. They can't look at. You guys, getting the image. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're? Seeing? <laughs> he said. He said a lot of a lot of star-like things swimming in the foreground. <laughs> they don't know what is going on. Well, the long line is uh, is a tether, um, and right, uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of debris. falls with us, and uh, it's uh, illuminated by the sun at such low angles. So this is this lot of stray light, and it's getting washed out uh, quickly. Serious? But uh, Claude is trying to do a, a quick, uh, good job here adjusting the cameras. See, they didn't know nobody was listening. They didn't know Martin Stubbs was tapping into the live video feed. Copy that. You know that description by the crew. This is uh, the tether it's over. in the satellite. It's a wrap. It's a wrap, y'all. Twelve miles of tether still attached to it. 
12 miles. Columbia and the satellite to look at just orbs. passing over. You see these? They got notches in them. The, the immune west coast of system northern orbs. Africa. The two soldiers got notches. That now That's how they identify themselves. Apart. Each one got their own individual notches. That deals with their ranks. Everything. Controllers for the satellite to did have communications uh, with it to, during the close pass. Hundreds uh, of them. Between Columbia and the satellite. <laughs> Look at this. They shooting stuff. They encapsulating it. Wait till I show y'all what I'm gonna show y'all next week. Columbia Houston has a heaven. much better view. Uh, a lot more contrast visible. I got footage. And how wide uh, does that tether appear to be? We, we, it seems to resemble a, a much wider Pulsating. strand than we'd expect. Pulsating. Can you describe which way the, uh, the satellite is visible on that uh, strand? Orbs, plasma, living beings, the intelligent. They didn't just come here. Remember, when they first deployed it, it was nothing around. The minute it broke and discharged that energy, they're like, what? They straightened that thing out real quick a field around it that thing ain't that thing ain't breaking through no van allen belts it ain't breaking through no dome i'm gonna show y'all how to get through the dome we're gonna go to the other side through meditation look at this you can't cross you can't go through the dome you got to leave your avatars behind avatars are not meant to go through that satellite to now 100 nautical miles. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the tether. I got other footage of the ISS surrounded by these. It, it, matter of fact, it was one video clip I had where it was surrounded by so many of these that the, the lady speaking, she couldn't tell which one was the ISS and what was what. She was like, she's like, it's over here. And she's like, she found it was the orb. She's like, no, no, it's over here. And she's like, oh, no, 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 that's not it. It's over. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm telling y'all, it's a wrap. Let me show y'all one more uh, clip just to show you how they shapeshift and how they actually come down to Earth. You've seen how Prophet Yahweh called it down. We have the ability to call these down. These are the host of heaven that will assist us in the last days. All right, let me just show you this one, how they come down. Um, and this guy he got some really creepy music in the background here so i'm gonna turn the music off i just want you to see he filmed this orb in his house like i told you they could take on any size any shape they're the ultimate shape shifters they could be three miles in diameter they could be the small size of a ball inside your house they could take any form they could take a human form they're the ultimate shape shifters and i'm, I'm gonna tell you more it's a lot more i gotta tell y'all but anyway let me just show y'all this picture of the orbs that people are filming in their homes. Sometimes they think it's spirits now. See it? And look how it looks. Keep in mind on how it looks. Let me turn this music on. Music going on here. Just, I just want you to see. I just want you to see when he gets close. I want you to see how it looks close up. It's plasma. Hold on. They made out of that same stuff, like in back in the 60s, they had those plasma balls, and you put your hand on it, you see it, the lines go to your hand. This is the same thing, plasma. All right? This is the same thing that um, stars, you know, so-called planets are all made from this. This is how they really look. And I'm going to show you another picture now. Keep this, in your, keep this in your mind. Like I said, they're the ultimate shapeshifters. And all those things that you see out there is this. Brother just say he's seen these all the time. I'm all right. See now, now everything is gonna start to click. Now it's all gonna start to click. All right. So you see how it looks. All right. Check out this picture of Venus. Other time is I'm, I'm keeping track of time. I'm gonna leave some time for answers. All right. This is Venus. Remember I told you about that Nikon P900. I've been getting footage that people's been taking with v, uh, uh, with um with those cameras of the so-called planets and like i told you the planets are nothing but orbs as well this is venus same thing it's orbs i'm telling you if it's not if it's not a human it's the orbs these are orbs all everything we see when we look out and look up are orbs and like i said they're even down here on earth all right this is venus now this is not how venus looks what NASA shows you pictures, all right? When NASA shows you pictures of Venus,